we have proven that the shift method gives us a planar drawing on a grid of polynomial size. Now we want to figure out what is the runtime of this. And for that, we first want to have a look at the pseudocode. How can we implement this? So we assume that we already have the canonical order, we know that this we can do in linear time. And now we start drawing the first three vertices. So for the first three vertex, their L set contains just themselves, and we draw it like this. And now we want to draw the remaining ones. So assume we've already drawn gi minus 1, we have w1 to wt on the outer face, we have the neighbors of vi are wp to wq. What do we have to do? We have to do our shifts. So we have to figure out what is the L set of vi, move that to the right, and what is here and move that two to the right. So we have three sets. The first one contains everything up to here. There we don't do anything. Then we have the middle part. And for that, we look at the L sets of all the vertices in between here, from P plus one to Q minus one. And all of those we shift by one to the right. And then we have all these. For those, we start with Q and go up to T. And all these sets we move by 2 to the right. That's the whole shift we have to do. Now we have to place vi, and for that we find the intersection of the plus 1 minus 1 diagonals through these two points, and we already proven that this gives us a planar drawing. Now the only thing that remains is find the L set for vi, but that again is very simple. We just take the union of the L sets of all the vertices in between here and add vi to it. And that's the whole pseudocode. Now what about the running time here? Everything here is constant, so we only have to look at the loops. If we look at one step, if we take all the vertices in these L sets, this might be linearly many that we have to shift. All the vertices in here, that also might be linearly many. So it can happen that in total we need quadratic time here. So that means that the whole algorithm runs in quadratic time. But we can be a bit smarter. We don't want to actually calculate the x coordinate for every vertex and every step, but we have this whole tree structure. When we have to move all the vertices in here, it's enough for us that the parent knows by how much everything here has to be shifted. And then later, we can go through the tree and apply all these shifts. So we don't calculate for it for every vertex, but only for the parent as the representative. But even then, for this part here, just looking at the parents can still be linearly many, and then we still have quadratic time in total if at every step we have to update the coordinate for this parent. So we have to be even smarter. And to be even smarter, we don't even store the x-coordinates at all. We only look at distances. So if you want to calculate the coordinates of vk for the y-coordinate, it's enough if we know the y-coordinate of wp and wq. Those are constants, they don't change at all through the algorithm, and the distance between these two. Then we can simply calculate the new coordinate by taking half the distance plus the sum of the y-coordinates of those. However, if we want to calculate the x-coordinate, then we actually need those coordinates we have. So we have to take half of the sum of the x-coordinates plus the y-distance between these two. But since we don't want to store x-coordinates explicitly, but only distances, this is fine. Instead, we can just store the x distance between vk and wp. And if we look at that, then what do we have to figure out? Well, we can't just take this whole thing and remove wp from it. And then instead of plus 1 over 2 wp, here we have a minus. And that again is our x coordinate difference. So we can't calculate the distance between wp and vk by just knowing the distance between wp and wq. And if we know the explicit y-coordinates, 
and the distances between vertices, then after we're done with Vn, we can do some pre-order traversal to compute the explicit coordinates. Of course, we have to be a bit careful. We have to be make sure that from those x distances we stored, we can actually calculate the coordinates. And that we don't calculate too many, because if we do it for every pair, then it's again n squared. So we want to calculate a relative x distance tree. So that in the end, when we know the x coordinates for v1 and v2, then we can calculate the x coordinate for everybody else and the y coordinates we just stored explicitly. So we always put v1 as the root. Now on the outer face, we just take all the edges and we direct them towards the root, so towards v1. So each vertex on the outer face has a parent which is just the na left neighbor on the outer face. And inside all these L sets, we have a bunch of other vertices they again have a tree where the root is this vertex on the outer face. So let's assume we have this tree and we have the x distances for all these directed edges. And now we want to add vk. What do we have to do? What do we have to update? Well, let's go through the steps of the algorithm. We first take these in the middle and shift them to the right by one. So this distance from this vertex here to this one gets increased by one. And all these here, they get shifted by two. So the distance from here to here is also increased by one. Now we want to calculate the coordinates for VK. For that, we need the X distance between WQ and WP. That means we have to sum up all these X distances on this path here. Once we have that, we can simply calculate this x distance by this formula and the y coordinate by this formula. Now there are only two adjustments we have to make. We need the new distance for this wq, which now doesn't go here, but up there. To calculate that, we already knew the distance from wp to it. We now have the distance from wp to vk, so we can easily calculate it as the difference. And then we have to change the parent of wp plus 1 because we said for all these L sets there should be a path to the root. There is currently no path from all these vertices up here. So instead of storing the distance from here to here, we just store that one. And that again is just the difference of this difference we know and this difference we know. And then we have the x distance between all of them. And from the tree, in the end, we can simply calculate the x coordinates. But now what about the running time? These here are all clearly constant, but this one takes a longer time. However, how much time do we really need? We have to take the x distance of wq and of all these vertices inside. But these are the covered vertices. Thus, we only have to look at exactly once because now they disappear from the outer face. So here, we only look at one plus the sum of vertices that are removed from the outer face in every step. So in total, we look at n vertices here plus order of n vertices here. So this whole operation only takes order of n time in total. And that way we get our running time and our main result that every n vertex planar graph has a planar straight line drawing of size 2n minus 4 times n minus 2, and we can compute it in linear time. This algorithm is the base for many, many graph drawing algorithms. And even for planar graphs, there have been some improvements. First of all, Kant in 1996 proved that if the input graph is three connected, then we can also draw all the faces convex by still having the same area bound and the same running time. And then one year later, together with Krobach, they even improved the area bound to n minus two times n minus two. And this area bound has further been improved by Brandenburg in 2008, 
to 4 over 3n times 2 over 3n. So it's a bit wider, but it's not so high. And this bound here is n squared, while this here is only 8 over 9 n squared. So this is slightly better. And the best known lower bound so far is 2 over 3n squared. So this narrows the gap between them, but it's still open whether 2 over 3 or 8 over 9 or something in between is the correct answer. Thank you for watching.